Curdy curd curd, cheddar curds. I think they got 10, 10 thumbs for fingers. You know? <laughs> they pull down the Oozy baboozy. Mmm. Mmm. I don't even know how to shoot this intro. It's the first one we've ever made. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Brad Leone. This is Taste Buds, where we taste and explore foods. Today we're tasting cheeses with my guest, Elizabeth Olson. Sorry, your first episode is um, in different countries. Where are you, by the way? I'm in England. I'm in um, an area called Richmond. Well, it sounds nice. There's giant snowflakes fluttering in the background. You're working out there. I'm working on um, on Doctor Strange. Duh. Duh? The second Doctor Bye. Strange. I went straight from finishing WandaVision to doing that sequel. I know we sent you over a box or a bag, but some cheeses and a few wines. And today I think, you know, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make a little cheese board. This is so heavy. It's my small cheese bag. Yeah, you mean mobile cheese shop is what we gave you. Yeah. My bag stinks. I, I don't I know. I do what, too, and I have is. so many apples. Oh, you got a bag of apples. And I have a and torture have device for cheese. You have a torture device? Cheese number one. Soft, Ooh. very soft. Brie, soft cheese, France, cow's milk raw. Mmm, really you know mild what? smelling. Wouldn't it be funny to meet like a 10 year old boy who like his no. passion is just like really obnoxious knowledge of like French cheese who's American. <laughs> Meeting a, a young boy who was very informative in cheese. Sounds like a career ending sentence, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It has a tang to it that was kind of surprising. I thought it was gonna be super buttery. Mm, it's quite nice, actually. Do you eat the rind? I can see how. I, you know, I, it, I guess it depends on the mood I'm in. You know, right now I'm not. I don't think I'm gonna go for the rind. I'm not ever into it. I, I don't really like it that much either. Let's move on to number two. Yeah, so I got two. Okay, so do you? Two for number two. And uh, light odor through the paper. Not much, yeah. <laughs> See what we got, it's like Christmas. Oh, I, recognize. I recognize this one. Grana Pandano. Grana Padana? Grana Padana. It's Padano. Don't ever listen to me, I'm sorry, on how to pronounce things. I hardly speak English. Hard Italy, cow's milk raw. The other one is Parmesan. All right, hard cheese, cow's milk raw, aged two years. Oh, it smells amazing. I would love to taste it side by side. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> The grotto pedano smells butterier and the parmesan smells like saltier or something. A little sharper. Sharper. My grotto pedano looks like a little waxier and the parm looks like it has more like curds. Almost like crumbly cheddar-y kind of. Yeah. Right? I'm gonna start with I'm gonna start with the I'm gonna start with <sighs> what are you gonna start with? I was thinking of starting with the grano. Yeah, me too. Super mild, really delicious. It just kind of tastes like, where's the parm? It does kind of still have that little bit of a younger kind of a freshness to it, right? Have you ever been to one of those places where they have all the parm and then they like present it to you and you taste all the different ages? Yeah, I have. I've been fortunate enough to um, go to Italy twice and just, you know, uh, aisles. These little Italian guys that come down there, you know, they got they got 10, 10 thumbs for fingers, you know? <laughs> and they pull down these, and they take uh, core samples and just seeing the whole process. You know, each one is just like a little, this is gonna sound so, so cheesy. Oh God. But um, it's like a little miracle. They don't know. I mean, they know at this point, but like, you don't know what's going to happen inside. It's the same kind of leap of faith you do with like natural fermentation, I'd imagine, with certain wines, depending on right. whether, the, what happened that year, the smoke or the drought. I'm going to put them right next to each other. We're not making this look cute, though. I'm not making it look cute. Okay, 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 fine. Very casual. Mine sounds like Very it's different modern. packages. Yeah, this has to be curd. Curdy curd curd, cheddar curds. Yeah, that looks fantastic. Mine came in a bag, they're from Wisconsin. Cow, I, you know, I, I trust them. They take their curd serious out there. And then we got a little buffalo mozzarella. And that's a soft cheese, similar to just a fresh, but it's made from buffalo milk. I'm gonna guess cheese curd is what happens when you separate whey from the milk. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And this is just right before they press it and turn it into, and age it and turn it into what we buy and know as cheese. Because my cheese curds smell like a birthday cake mm. dough. Really? 
Let me smell mine. <laughs> like straight up butter. Oh, I see what you're saying. Good nose, Lizzie. <laughs> it's really bringing me back to childhood right now. This is delicious. People are grabbing those. Especially if you had like an olive or a nut, just pop it in. And then the buffalo mozzarella, I think I'm just gonna drain. What's your move? I would plop it down in like a dish, not on this board, because right. I feel like it's gonna get messy. a little messy. olive oil or something? Yeah. So. I got one. Oh, you got I one? I don't have one. I just, it would happen to just be here. I'm not even I'm kidding. gonna have, I'm gonna find one. <laughs> This is what I've got. I broke it up a little bit. Oh Ooh, my goodness, spoon. it's good. I could eat this entire thing. It's very easy. I would put a little pink peppercorn or some black. I, I love pink peppercorn. I was gonna put black pepper on it, but then I was like, wait, Lizzie, you're not, you're gonna mess up the purity of this experiment. No, not hanging out with me. I'm fine with that. They go together really well. What's the deal with the apples? A little, little palate cleanser. Reinvite some new cheeses. Quick little apple mm -hmm. fanage. And uh, you gotta have a little bread with that, you know, just kind of. I agree. All right, so cheese number four. Let's see what we got. It doesn't right. smell like anything. It smells like mold. Mold is good in the cheese world. It smells moldy. Red. It's like, how do the English say this word? Someone help me. Lester. Red Laster? Lester. Lester. <laughs> Red Lester. Red Lester. UK, hard, kind of crumbly, little waxy, cow's milk. Which I actually really love this cheese. Um, I've never had a cheese like this. Oh. Yeah. Dig in. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah, that's easy to eat. That would be mm -hmm. great on a cheddar sandwich. What's going on my board any day? Red Lester. Red Lester? Red Lester. Hey, Put your work boots on. We got number five here. Tete de Mon. Tete de Mon. Fact check. Tete de Mon. Mine also that at the bottom says fromage de belele. <laughs> it was a semi-hard Swiss cheese cow raw. Delicious. This is the one where we set up that as you called the uh, torture device. I've only had this once in my life, this cheese, and it was, it was an awesome experience. It was in like this little dungeon cave in France. I, I don't even remember where. And the guy explained it to me, the bald spot, like it's the cheese, like it stands for like the bald spot cheese, oh, like the little funny. monk on his head. And it's the way that you cut it and like the way it ends up, you end up with like a bald spot or something like that. This is a great looking block of cheese or, or, or cylinder of cheese, isn't it? Like if I made this, I would, I'd be stoked. Oh, I'm sorry, you're doing something serious. I'm using a cheese knife to cut through this thing. I used a chef's knife and it worked great. I bet it did. <laughs> and then boom, yeah, right on the spit there. And then it's got like little, like little footings, like little spikes on the bottom. I wanna go ahead and nestle it in right there. I'm oh. kind of worried about the way it smells. <laughs> it's got a lot going on, huh? It's like ammonia, is that the word? I'm getting very gamey. Like, yes. don't this, like raw like game meat. Yes, it smells very gamey. <laughs> when the guy did it, when I had it, it made like these beautiful like chanterelle mushroom ribbons. Yeah, I got a chanterelle too. Oh, you did a great job. I remember it being delicious, so. Now that's a very complicated flavor to me. Like picante, like provolone kind of sharpness. Kind of reminded you know, me of armpits. I love armpits. <laughs> Put a little jam on one. <laughs> <laughs> I think like with a wine or a jam or something like that, I think it might even like transform it into a whole different kind of experience. Well, you should know, we like, open a bottle of wine then? Twist my arm. Let's do Lambrusco. So it's one of my favorite types of wines. It's like a light sparkling red, good with a little chill on it. You can have a glass of it and it's not like a big deal usually. Pretty color. Oh, that's the stuff. Cheers. Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, I could drink that all day. I'm gonna try it with the cheese. It brings out the gaminess. Oh, it does. A white might've been the, the way. Like I'm sure there's a lot of people being like, yeah, what are we on, number six? So that okay. is hard. Squeaky. This is a delightful cheese as well. This is glorious. Is this Swiss or something? Emmental. Emmental? Emmental. How do you spell it? Yeah, so it's a semi-hard Switzerland cheese, uh, cow milk raw, and it's aged nine to 12 months. Like it makes me want more salt. Beyond being on a cheese board, how one would use this cheese. According to Murray's, it's a required base for fondue, right? So I've been going down like a jam rabbit hole. I, by, like, like in the past couple weeks. What have been the jams that you feel like have challenged you? <laughs> I found a sour cherry jam. 
it was just delightful because it had the, the right amount of sweet, obvious, but then it also had like this nice undertone of sour that uh, kind of kept you like puckering and kind of cut that stinky cheese. Mm. Whether it's good or bad, I've been kind of dipping at it once, you know, once a day. I've been really boring with my cheeses recently. It's been Parmesan, Pecorino, and Comte. Plowing on the number seven. Oh, okay, here we go. Oh boy. See, this is the shit yeah, that scares me. No, this is the stuff make you live forever. It'll make me live forever? Yeah, that's not FDA approved, but I believe it'll help you uh, maintain a healthy gut biome. Oh, really? Number seven, we have two of them again. Blue brain, okay. It's a soft cheese, Switzerland, cow, broth. It's uh, just covered in mold. Well, it's got some really cool texture to it, right? Oh my God, it terrifies me. Kevin, you're gonna wanna get in here. Like, like the top of it came to a peak and it's like green. I it's don't have really the green good. tip. <laughs> it's a lot. If I was like stumbling in the woods and came across this, I'd be like, whoop, gonna put this in my mouth, you know, like. If you stumbled across this in the woods, you'd be like, where's the you horse won't. that just pooped? Yeah, or like sci-fi movie. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open it up. It's scaring me. Oozy baboozy. Look at this thing. Ooh, yours is like a volcano yeah. spa. For Mine's sure. starting to smell like one of my favorite restaurants I went to when I was working oh, in Scotland, go. the Gardener's Cottage. And this smells like a dish I had there that I can't remember. The beauty of food, huh? The smell of uh, semi-rotting uh, milk covered in mold brought you back to one of your favorite restaurants and dishes in Scotland. I want to go to Scotland so bad. I mean, that's the best part about being an actor is being able to live in different places. Yeah, maybe I'll be an actor after this. You're doing what I do. Eating cheese. <laughs> That's it, right? Mmm. Oh, yeah. This is one of my favorites so far. Delicate and has a ton of flavor. That, That's awesome. I almost want to try the green tip now. That reminds me of Stilton. A lot of blue cheeses have a, 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 a characteristic of flavor, right? That kind of goes through them. Did you look at the next one? Yes. Epois, soft. France, burgundy, cow, pasteurized. Now it smells like a pig manure. What I've been told in a little bit of research is that this cheese in France is banned in, uh, in public transportation because of how fragrant it is. It's intense, you know, I'm not gonna lie. In the cave, this cheese probably looks very different. It definitely looks like a fungus. Well, let's cut in, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's very nice. Whoa. Salty, funky. Sour? Oh, you don't like it? <laughs> I like it much more with bread. Like a ham sandwich, maybe? I mean, a little leftover porchetta from Christmas dinner or something. I like where that's going. Let's open up number eight here. Not super fragrant through the paper. No. The St. Alban, U.S. cow pasteurized. Mine says St. Marcelin. Vermont. You have the original. But Vermont Creamery, they make one that's inspired by that. How cute. Nice little... Like you pop this in the oven. Let it get real nice. Oh, I like that. Yeah. yeah I'm gonna, let's pop them in the oven, right? And come back to, let's come back to that. Hot cheese. The ovens here are very strange. Is it old? I feel like for some reason, like in my head, like they're, they're just like all old ovens. Mine is. <laughs> <laughs> this is the stuff right here. You know, I love it. it goes on, it's like lava. And then it just kind of, kind of just like sets on it, like wax a little bit. And it's like coating oh, wow. the roof of my mouth. Oh, it's very, it's intense. It's a, it's a very, it's got some depth to it. It's almost nutty. It almost tastes like melted speck fat or like prosciutto fat. Mmm. Meow, I really like that one. Between that and these cheddar Ooh. curds I've never had before are really fun. I don't know what your board looks like. Mine looks, you know, I tell you what it looks like if I had a party, it wouldn't look much different. You could jump in there and just start eating. Mine doesn't yeah. look approachable. Mine looks like it's all set out in order to go somewhere else. <laughs> Man, I really liked all of them, to be honest, but was there any to you that really kind of stood out? I really love the heated guy. It's kind of hard to beat that. I don't know how much better it can get. And then I was really happy I learned about Red Leicester. Because this is an English cheese, was it not? You can go and uh, see how the, how the sausage is made. Yeah, like I would really love to do that stuff. <laughs> like, please. That and the blue cheese, the blue brain was kind of a, you know, I didn't know where that was going to go. And the green tip monster thing that kind of scared me at first, it was probably one of my favorite cheeses for sure. I also learned 
that I could handle stinky cheese. I never thought I really could. Stinkier the better. Lizzie, thank you so much for taking your time out to come and, you know, and be a guest on the show here. Taste buds. I had so much fun. I hope I get to do this again with another thing to discover. Absolutely, anytime. Kind of wish I could do more of is just food shows. <laughs> I'll do your job for six months and you come do mine. Easy. <laughs> Sounds hard. And I, I do believe the, the more funky foods, the stinkier, the better, the, uh, the, healthier, the healthier you will be. Can be. FDA not approved. Love that idea. Let's make a show about it and travel the world doing it. Kimchi, sauerkraut, all the things that just ferment. That's my that's my jam. That's what I that's what I've been doing. I love it. I love the fermentation. You should see my house. What a journey. Hey guys, I'm Brad Leone and this is Taste Buds. <laughs> a show where we ha <clears throat> the show. A show where we experience. That sounds fun, right? Of culinary exploration. A show of culinary exp <laughs> <laughs> culinary exploration. Not culinary. It's the hardest part. <laughs>